Normally, when we divide, what happens is that we are sharing a number into smaller, equal parts. The number of parts are defined by the divider. The key here is that at the end of the division, all the pieces are equal in size. For example, 50 pounds divided by 10 is 5 pounds, with each piece being equal in size. When we divide or share by ratio, what we will be doing is dividing an amount into unequal pieces. Think of it like this. You want to divide the same 50 pounds amongst two friends, but you want to give one friend more than the other. Ratios are a way of showing this unequal division mathematically. At this point, if you need more of a recap on the basics of ratios, you may want to check out our introduction to ratios video. More information is in the description. Okay, let's say I want to divide that 50 pounds between two friends with the ratio two to three. Here, we've been given an amount to divide into two different uneven pieces. The first side is made up of two parts and the second side is made up of three parts. So this tells us that the second side will end up being bigger than the first side. The key for all of these questions is to find out what one part in our ratio is worth. First, we find out how many parts we have in total. Here, we have a ratio with two parts and three parts, which means that we have five parts in total. We are also told that the total amount is 50 pounds. This means that 50 pounds is equal to five parts. We can then find out what one part is worth by dividing 50 by five. Here we can see that one part is worth 10 pounds. Great, now that we know what one part is worth, the rest of this question is pretty straightforward. The first side of our ratio was worth two parts. So to find out what this will be, we take our one part and multiply it by how many parts there are on this side, which is two. This gives us 20 pounds. Then for the second side of our ratio, we have three parts. So we multiply our one part by three. This gives us 30 pounds. So our final answer looks like this. 50 pounds divided by the ratio two to three is 20 pounds and 30 pounds. We have successfully divided 50 pounds into two uneven pieces and the way of double checking our final answer, we can see that when we add all the pieces together, our 20 pounds and 30 pounds, we get back to our original amount, which is 50 pounds. Here's another example. In year eight, the ratio of girls to boys is one to three. There are 300 students in year eight in total. Work out the number of girls in year eight. Then work out the number of boys in year eight. The number one in this ratio represents the girls because girls were mentioned first in the sentence. This also means that the number three in this ratio represents the number of boys. This also tells us straight away that for every one girl, there are three boys. In order to answer the question, we will need to divide 300 by the ratio one to three. We need to find out what one part in our ratio is worth. This time, we have a ratio with one part and three parts, which means that we have four parts in total. We are also told that the total amount is 300 students. This means that 300 is equal to four parts. So to find out what one part is worth, we can divide 300 by four, which will give us one part equal to 75. For the girls, they represent one part. We actually already know that one part is worth 75, so that means that there are 75 girls. For the boys, on the second side of our ratio, this is worth three parts. So here, we multiply our one part, which is 75, by three, which gives us a total of 225 boys. So, our final answer looks like this. 300 students, shared by the ratio one to three, is 75 girls and 225 boys. We can double check this by adding 75 and 225 together, and this gives us 300, which was the amount we started with. Another example, Tunde is going to make some concrete mix. He needs to mix cement, sand and gravel in the ratio one to two to four by weight. Tunde wants to make 140 kilograms of concrete mix. Tunde has 15 kilograms of cement, 85 kilograms of sand and 100 kilograms of gravel. Does Tunde have enough cement, sand and gravel to make the concrete mix he wants? Firstly, based on the order of the sentence and the ratio, Cement represents one part, sand represents two parts, and gravel represents four parts. In order to answer this question, we will need to divide 140 by the ratio one to two to four. 
When we work this out, this will tell us how much cement, sand and gravel Tunde needs. We will then have to compare this with how much cement, sand and gravel Tunde actually has, which will tell us if he has enough of each of the ingredients for the concrete mix. So, we find out what one part in our ratio is worth. We add all our parts together, which gives us seven parts in total. We are also told that Tunde wants to make a total of 140 kilograms of concrete mix. So this means that 140 must be equal to seven parts in this question. To find out what one part is worth, we divide 140 by seven, which gives us 20 kilograms. Great, now that we know that one part is worth 20 kilograms, the rest of the question will be straightforward. For cement, multiplying one part by 20 gives us 20 kilograms. For sand, multiplying the two parts by 20 kilograms gives us 40 kilograms. And for gravel, multiplying four parts by 20 kilograms gives us 80 kilograms. Comparing these amounts with what Tunde has, Tunde needs 20 kilograms of cement, but he only has 15 kilograms, which is not enough. He needs 40 kilograms of sand, and he has 85 kilograms, even more than he needs. He needs 80 kilograms of gravel, and he has 100 kilograms of gravel. So our final answer is that Tunde cannot make the cement mix, as he does not have enough cement. He needs 5 kilograms more of cement. To summarize, when sharing an amount using a ratio, calculate how much one part is worth by first finding the sum of the parts by adding the values in the ratio together. Then divide the value given by the total parts to give you the value of one part. Using the values in the ratio, multiply what one part is worth by these values to give the final answers. Pause the video and try these questions yourself. If you like this series, be sure to comment, like and subscribe to be kept updated on new in-depth videos. And more importantly, share. I mean, what's the point of knowledge if you can't share it, right? And if we can make some people not give up on maths because of these videos, then our job is done. Don't see a topic you need help with? Suggest topics in the comment section. We do read all the comments. Thanks again for watching and for learning.